Hi, my name is Marin and today FM rocks in Lambasa. Mula, my name is Mark. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks in Makassi. Hey, Bula from Rocky Rocky. I'm Mentor. I love listening to Today FM because they're playing my hits. Today FM rocks. My name is Enrico. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks in Suba. Hi, I'm Asunika and I'm from Lotoka and I love Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, I'm Siva. I'm from Bat. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. And of Naka Fiji in this bulletin, house fire claims the life of a five-year-old. Restrictions on subsidized e-card for students and demand for luxury housing increases. From the studios of FBC Suba, Edwin Nak. A couple is mourning the death of their five-year-old son who perished in a house fire in Makoi, 8 Miles, Nasinu yesterday morning. It's believed the victim was unable to escape when their two-bedroom house on Kia Street along the Matanikorabatu Road caught fire at around 10 o'clock. An eyewitness, Sunil Chan, says he called the National Fire Authority when he saw the smoke coming out of the house. He says by the time the firefighters arrived, the fire had spread to the rest of the house. Chan says efforts were made to save the five-year-old boy. The NFA will work with police to conduct an investigation to determine the cause of the fire. Due to an increase in the abuse of e-transport assistance provided by the government, restrictions will be placed on cards used by students from next year. Education Ministry Permanent Secretary Alison Birchall says restrictions on blue e-cards have already come into effect and is urging students to use a supplementary red-yellow card for travelling during school holidays. She adds changes have also been made to the times when the cards can be used from next year. There will be a restriction uh, on the blue cards for students. Uh, so they will be operational between 6.30 in the morning and 9 o'clock in the morning. And then again from 2.30 in the afternoon until 5 p.m. Uh, and that would be on weekdays. The Correction Service Amendment Bill 2019, enacted in Parliament last week, has been welcomed by the Fiji Women's Crisis Centre. The amendment bill states that prisoners for whom non-parole periods are fixed will have to serve the entire term of the non-parole period. Centre coordinator Shamima Ali says a global research shows it's difficult to change the mindset of convicted rapists. Ali says the research shows most of them are recidivists, which means that they will commit the offence again. And there are some cases in Fiji as well. We have been lobbying very hard for years that, you know, rapists must serve their full sentence, non-parole, men who beat up their wives, who attempt murder on them, attempt rape on women, that they should serve the full sentence. They should face the full brunt of the law, and parole is not for them. The Ministry of Health is expected to receive a batch of 200,000 measles vaccines tomorrow. Minister for Health Dr. Ifiremi Wangainabete says there are being 10 confirmed cases of measles. The remaining vaccine stock will be prioritized to those who are at greatest risk of catching and spreading measles. Dr. Wangainabete adds the current vaccines are not available for the public until additional stock arrive. Over 100,000 Fijians received the measles vaccine already. The minister is also advising people to avoid mass gatherings from the Serua to Nosuri corridor to stay away from Navuni Kambi village and Wainandui and also avoid unnecessary visits to Serua and Namosi. The World Health Organization says the, world, the outbreak is the world's largest and fastest moving epidemic. The installation of color-coded number plates for taxis in Suva will roll out by mid-2020, says Land Transport Authority's Chief Executive Samuel Simpson. Simpson says that they've installed over 100 color-coded plates to taxis in Nandi and Lotoka. He adds a delay must be expected as the authority awaits another phase of the Suva taxi redraw. And you will see different colored plates for different areas. Well, Suva, we will probably leave um, until later because um, in next year we will have another Suva taxi draw uh, probably sometime within quarter one of 2020 so there's no point in, in starting Suva until we've actually fulfilled the, the taxi quota uh, and that won't be uh, achieved until uh, we have the taxi draw. 
Fijians are now investing in high-end properties as demand for luxury houses has increased over the years. Properties advertised show rent has skyrocketed due to demand for high-end residences. Kritika Kumar reports. The Real Estate Agents Licensing Board highlights that under the current law, there are no rules in place to control rent or the price of houses on the open market. We'll work out something in terms of the commission that is charged by the, by, by, by the real estate agents, which also, uh, to some extent, inflate the prices of properties. Dr. Abdul Hassan says expatriates are the only ones who rent expensive houses. But that demand may not continue for long. It will be at certain times when the new embassies are established or NGOs are establishing their own office in, in Fiji, then of course the demand would be there. Local government and housing minister Premila Kumar says consumers in the country have different choices. So there is a demand for high-end property and we have seen um, such properties uh, being available in the market. So, so that's a good sign and people are willing to spend to rent high-end properties. Meanwhile, the price of renting houses and apartments continues to increase. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. Road contractors are being urged to follow conditions in their contract to avoid delays in roadworks. This comes after the Fiji Roads Authority terminated a contract last week. Gizo Road and Bridge Company was contract to, contracted to rehabilitate 17 roads within the Greater Suva area from March to October this year. Minister for Infrastructure Chone Usamate highlighted that the company lost its contract because it failed to meet its contractual obligations. Obviously, nobody wants to cancel contracts, but we have to because there's a problem. And there's a problem, you have to fix it. And in this particular case, this is a solution that's been put in place. Twenty students graduated from the Navuso Agriculture Training Institute will be able to access savings amounting to $12,000. This has been confirmed by the head of the institute, Uraya Waimbuta, as students have started investing from their first year in school. Waimbuta informed the students that it's vital to use the funds well, despite being a fruit of their hard work and sacrifices. Although putting in money into that bank account is something else, but uh, at, at least we acknowledge that uh, everybody, uh, every student has a bank account. And in total, the total amount of money that is in the student's bank account for this year, total $12,409. And we wish to acknowledge those students that did their very best to plant as much and uh, contribute to their own savings. Coming up, Walder knocks out OTs in seventh round. And Zodiacs ready for Aussie tour. Ahoy Tabua, ang gito talita na na barong na bulay FM, nambando na sir. Bula, alang gonoa, iluto ka, gito talita ka na bulay FM, bulti na nambando na sir. Ni bulay pina ka, nandrekin ko sa bulay FM nga. Welcome back. The bronze bomber Deontay Wilder has knocked out Luis Ortiz in the seventh round to remain undefeated and retain his WBC heavyweight title. Wilder says Ortiz had him in close encounter with brutal punches, but he rose to the challenge. This is Wilder's 10th consecutive defense of the WBC title. Fiji Badminton is looking to hold more local competitions in an effort to revive the sport. President Barry White says, says it's important to run programs now in order to develop young players. Fiji Badminton is targeting hosting rights for the Oceania Badminton Championships and Whiteside says they already have plans in place. He adds a key challenge for them will be securing funding. We're, we're looking in two years time. We've uh, had a good chat with uh, Badminton Oceania and um, we're hopeful that we can uh, host, host the Oceania event in two years time. Flying Fiji and Lok Devita Ratuva was red carded for a shoulder charge during a ruck on Tulun flanker Mamuka Gordose as Tulun defeated Scarlet 17-16 in the European Challenge Cup. 
The Zodiac men's and women's under-19 basketball teams have been, for their, uh, have been preparing for their international tour for the past five months. The side will travel to Australia for the first time in January to compete against open-graded clubs. Sabe Wanga with the story. Leading the charge for the under-19 Zodiac's men's basketball team, Captain Rusate Katunitambua says this is a special moment for him. It's, it's a special moment, um, but it's just uh, the leading part. Just have to just have to set an example. Um, it will be hard out there, but then we'll, we'll be up for the chance. Captain Tambua says the challenge in Australia will vary, but the team is on a mission. Oh, definitely the skill and the height. But um, our main aim is just to, uh, most of us want to get scouted or get a scholarship from that. So just to show our best and hopefully get, our, get scouted. Girls team captain Estelle Kenamoli says maintaining fitness throughout the festive season is important. Patients are going well. Uh, uh, we have trainings in the morning and the evening. Uh, training is tough because uh, it's, it's just November, so we're still working on our fitness and all. But so far, it's so good. The side will depart Fiji early next year with hopes to secure basketball scholarships and contracts in Australia. Savi Wanga. FBC Sports. Expect cloudy conditions and showers over most places today. And that's your FBC Morning News. Remember to join us at 1 p.m. and 7 p.m. for our major bulletin for these stories and others. Tune in to our sister radio station, Gold FM. That's it from me for now. Have a good morning. And I'm from Kadavi. And Mirchi FM, it's hot. Hama chale na sorry se Mirchi FM bo julu. Hi, I'm Shara Pakesh baat karta hai. Aur tawa me Mirchi FM sab kuch hai and Mirchi FM it's hot. Hi, my name is Prashant. I live in Suva. I love Mirchi FM because Mirchi FM it's hot. Hi, I'm Shane. I love uh, listening Mirchi FM because it's awesome and it's hot. Hi, I'm Rachel. And I'm Shavi. We, we love listening to Mirchi FM in Lambasa. Mirchi FM, it's hot.